Traditionally, the tool that we've used for managing Active Directory has been Active Directory users and computers. There is another more recent tool, however, called the Active Directory Administrative Center. And the idea behind the Active Directory Administrative Center was to simplify access to Active Directory. So right here on your first startup screen, we have a reset password option, which is awesome. We can find a username and password, or find a username, um, reset their password, set their options, and click Apply. And we can do it from right here without having to do all of the searching that we had to do before in Active Directory users and computers. We also have the option to do a global search right here and look for a specific user or group. Okay. Active Directory Administrative Center also gives us access to the same functionality as Active Directory users and computers with a few more things added on. So you'll see right here we have our domain and I can expand that and I can look for other sections in my domain. So I'm going to add West Wing and I'm going to click on Staff. Now that takes me to Administrative Center the domain West Wing Staff. And you'll also notice that that now creates a shortcut over here. So here are my users and groups and I can create a new and then organizational unit group user computer. I can delete, I can move, I can look for properties. I can do all the things that I'm used to doing just now in a slightly different uh, layout. So Sam Seaborn, I select the user, I have the reset password, view the password settings, add to group, disable the account. Uh, again, all the stuff that I'm used to being able to do in Active Directory users and computers for both users and groups and organizational units. Now as I add things in you'll see I create shortcuts over here. So if I click this shortcut it will take me straight to the guests. So <clears throat> this is one view. The other view is here which is a standard tree view which will take us to all the same places. It just gives us now a view of Active Directory in its entirety rather than having to go search and creating shortcuts to different sections the way we have over here in this view. Also notice that in this view what we have is the uh, um, advanced view of Active Directory. So we have a few more things. We can right click on objects, so right click on guests, go to properties, let me expand this out a little bit. So here's my organizational unit. Now, everything is listed here in one great big long page, but I can jump to specific sections by clicking on it here rather than scrolling all the way through. Now, remember we said this is equivalent to the advanced view, including right here, protect from accidental deletion. So we have all of our functionality of our advanced view in Active Directory users and computers here. We also have our tasks, so we can delete, we can move, not a whole lot you're going to do with an OU. And here are the sections, and if I don't want to see the managed by section, I just uncheck that, and that disappears from over here, and now I don't have to scroll by that or have that included in my view. All right, if I open up a user, let's open up Sam Seaborn. All right, same thing, tasks, delete, move, disable, reset password. Here is our account information. Here's our organizational information, what we're a member of, our password settings, our profile. Now notice here we don't have some of that older information. The profile is still there, but some of those other older information things we don't have, like um, the... Uh, your remote desktop settings. We don't have all of that remote desktop information here. So this is trimmed down a little bit from Active Directory users and computers. But pretty much the stuff we use on a regular basis, including down here, log on hours, log on to, is all still pretty much intact. Now there's a couple of other things here that have been added, at, however. So we have authentication policies and authentication silos that are new 
to Active Directory Administrative Center. And all the stuff I said that was missing, like the remote desktop stuff, notice that's down here under our extensions. So even though it's not here and in that main page, we can still get to it from the Active Directory Administrative Center. All right, let's create a new user here in ADAC. So I'm going to right click, go to new user, and I'm going to create a user for Toby Ziegler. Oops, let me do that right. First name, last name, full name, auto populates, user logon, let's do T Ziegler. Okay. Let me spell Ziegler correctly. So all of this stuff was the stuff we had to put in before. And notice the only things that are technically required are the asterisk thing here. So we have to have the full name. We have to have the same account name. Everything else is optional. By the way, if you create a user without a password, it will do it. That password will just be disabled automatically. All right, and then we'll set the password. Now, when we did this in Active Directory Users and Computers, we created the new user. Then we had to go back in and edit that user in order to get all the other information. Well, here we have everything right um, from the very beginning. So we can populate all of this at the very start. The other thing I want you to notice is right here, Create In. Let me click the change thing, and this will let you select where you want that user to be created in. So it'll let you set the OU. Also, I want you to take a look at this. OU equals staff, OU equals West Wing, DC equals Dalton, DC equals local. Right, that is the path starting from the most specific OU and then all the way out. So it's staff then West Wing, then Dalton.local. And that's what this path is. Now, you're going to want to remember that because if you are managing things from Active Directory, let me try that again. If you're managing Active Directory from PowerShell, that makes more sense, you're going to need to know some of those locations. And it's pretty straightforward. Just remember, it starts with the most specific OU and works itself all the way back out through all the OUs to the domain. And if you've got subdomains, it would be the subdomain, then the parent domain, all the way up to the top level domain dot local. Okay, I've gone ahead and created my user. I'm going to hit OK. And that's going to add Toby Ziegler. I want to add Toby Ziegler to the communications group, which, by the way, I could have done while I was here, creating him just by adding him to the member of. I can also do it from the group. Let me go to members, and I want to add Toby. And we're going to find Toby Ziegler. Hit OK. Toby Ziegler is now a member of our group. All right, so this is just another tool that we can use to manage Active Directory. Um, some people really like it. Some people are so comfortable with Active Directory users and computers that they never use it. However, either one of them is a viable option. There are some tools in... Um, the administrative center that are not available in Active Directory users and computers related to dynamic access control and Azure Active Directory integration. So there are some things to be aware of there. Um, the Active Directory recycle bin also is accessed and managed from the administrative center. So just be aware of those things. Other than that, you're going to pick the tool that you are most comfortable with, and that's the one that you're going to use.